after the rise of the Islamic State, during the times of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and in the later periods including the age of Andalusia and the Ottomans, we have considered the oldest historical mosques in more than 12 Arab and European countries. In order to see the landmarks of those time periods and the Islamic conquest that are associated with them and the role that they played in spreading the civilization of Islam which the Arabs are carrying forward with every passing generation. And so, the mosques we cover in this series have many historical stories since they were founded. The mosques in this series have stories that have to be told and cannot be forgotten. Their stories are a living embodiment of the age of Islamic Renaissance. They are part of Islamic history. They are the oldest and most important mosques in the world. Mosques with a vibrant history. With God's permission, they were built to last. Al Mahdiya city in Tunisia was the beginning, as it was the first capital of the Fatimid dynasty, the birthplace of their creed and the headquarters to their nation, which was in power for 270 years. During the time of their reign, the Fatimids had a varying control over the countries of Al Maghrib, Egypt, and the Levant. The man who established this dynasty, Obayd Allah Al Mahdi, built his capital on the narrow island that was an old port city. He built fortress walls around it and made it exclusive to the Grand Mosque, the palace, administrative buildings and a few stores. At its entrance stood a massive gate which led to a residential neighborhood outside of the city known as the al Zawaila. The Fatimids, however, after being faced with numerous consecutive revolts, went in search of a new capital and that is what they found in the 4th history century in Egypt, while Egypt was going through a tremendous political trouble time, during the fall of the Ekhshid power. During the time of the 4th of its sultans, Al-Mu'izz al-Din Allah al-Fatimi, Jauha Sakili was charged with conquering Egypt, which he did successfully and there he established Cairo. That is why Cairo is known as Cairo of al -Muiz. When Joha il Sikili began building the city of Cairo north of al fustat in the year 358 Hishri or 969 CE, he wanted it to be a capital befitting his sultan al Mahayas, Lidin Allah. Thus, he wanted it to have a stronghold of great size, a city that was comprehensive. And so he surrounded it with a high wall and paved its roads, the most important being the main road, that is Al Ma'ayas Ladin Allah Street, which begins at the Zawaila Gate in the south and runs all the way to the two gates of Al Nasa and Al Fudda in the north. The city also had gates on the eastern and western walls. Inside these walls is a spectacular array of mosques, palaces, schools, shuks and khans, and many other historical monuments. On the street of al muizz de Din Allah are many buildings relevant to the history of Islam. More than 60% of the antiquities of Fatimid Cairo can actually be found on al muizz de Din Allah street and it is thus said that it is one of the largest or most important historical streets in the entire world. 
meaning it is ranked the first or second street in terms of the number of antiquities. Many new architectural elements began to appear with the spread of the Fatimid architecture. These elements were new in that they differed from what one was used to seeing in Islamic architecture in Egypt. Whether the architecture belonged to the time of the Viceroys or the Tulanids or the Ikhshids, the Fatimids were the first to use engraved stones on the facades of their buildings in place of traditional brick. These facades were ornamented with decorative engravings carved into stone, plaster of wood, while the mosques of Al Fustat and Al Kati were empty of any decorative elements. When the Fatima dynasty emerged, the Islamic region had three different caliphates the Abbasid, the Fatimid, which was at its beginnings, and the Umayyads in Andalusia, and this led to a competition of sorts. The competition was on several aspects of life. The cultural, the environmental, political and economic between all three caliphates. And that is why we find that Islamic architecture of that time moved from a phase of copying to a phase of full innovation, something which is clearly evident in the Fatimid style of architecture. As is the case in all newly established Islamic cities, the Grand Mosque was at the heart of the city, and in this case, Al-Azha Mosque, which was the center of the city's architectural plan and development. And so, it was built in a central location and is the first Fatimid antiquity in Egypt. We are now at the heart of Islamic Cairo where we can see the Azhar Mosque, the largest and most prominent mosque in Egypt. There behind me you can see the mosque's minarets, and further into the distance, one would be able to see the sign pointing to the University of Al-Azhar. When the mosque was originally built, it was known as the Mosque of Cairo. It wasn't called the Azhar Mosque right from the start, but rather the Mosque of Cairo, as it was built at the same time as the Fatimid city was established. The name was later on changed to the Azhar Mosque. There are many accounts that attempt to explain the name change, one of which that it is in reference to Fatima Zahra. Another account explained the name as being derived from the Arabic word for prosperous. Whichever the reason, the mosque's name was changed to Al-Azhar and prayers were held in it throughout the time of Fatimid Egypt. Johar al-Sikili wanted al-Azhar to be a beacon of education and house of worship, a symbol for what the Fatimids saw themselves as representatives of a religious authority. The construction of the Azhar Mosque began in the year 359 Hijri and was completed in the year 361 Hijri. The Azhar Mosque is synonymous with the Fatimid dynasty. It was an educational hub where all sciences were taught. It was an educational institution, a center for the spread of Shia creed. On specific days, the High Fatimid Mufti would sit in it to call people to Shiaism, teaching both men and women at this mosque. The mosque continued on in this role until the fall of the Fatimid dynasty in the year 567 Hijri. At the heart of the Azhar Mosque is an open courtyard surrounded by four vestibules, the largest being the Qibla vestibule. The arches of the walls stand on pillars built and carved in different styles and designs. The Azhar Mosque did not have a minaret during the Fatimid era. Its current minarets are Mamluk structures credited to Sultan Kate Beyer and others. There are many minarets that date back to the times of different sultans. This is in addition to a unique treat that is found by those who enter the mosque. And that is the ancient timepiece, which is built into the floor of the mosque's courtyard. The timepiece is still intact and is still functioning to this day. The clock was actually found during the most recent renovation of the mosque and was renovated at that time as well. 
The Azhar Mosque saw many large changes after the fall of the Fatimid dynasty and the rise of the Ayyubid era. The Fatimids would write inaccurate tales about the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, with letters made of gold. And so, Salah din removed all of this and closed down Al-Azhar for years while he changed its curricula and its activities, making it a Sunni institution, or more accurately, the most important Sunni institution in the Arab and Islamic world to this day and age. The Mamluks also took a great deal of interest in the mosque and made many additions to its original structure. This was so many of the original educational roles could be performed. They also added annexes for student housing and some additions were also made during the Ottoman era. The original structure of the mosque was expanded and many architectural elements were added to it. The most important structures added to it were the Azhar vestibules, which at some point, and especially during the Ottoman era, came up to 23 vestibules. When it was revived by the Dahar Babers, it was used by the Muslims to spread the Sunni creed, and that is when it became a center for religious studies. And in fact, there came a time when the only beacon for Islamic studies in the Muslim world was the Azhar. And so the Azhar was the school for many generations both in the east and in the west of the Muslim world. To the north of Azhar lies the mosque of Al-Imam Al-Hussein, which is known by the name of Al-Mashhad Al-Husseini. Built towards the end of the Fatimid era in the year 549 Hijri or 1154 CE. And at its gate, which is known as the Green Gate, is a magnificent minaret adorned with decorative plaster designs. We are now in the square opposite the Hussein Mosque or Al Mashhad al Husseini. I am standing directly opposite to the mosque, and as you can see, the main door of the mosque is in front of me. Looming above it is the beautiful modern minaret, and the older minaret can be seen in the distance. That is the minaret that dates back to four centuries ago. The Hussein Mosque is one of the most famous mosques in Egypt and is visited by many of the residents and visitors of Cairo. As for the other mosques we see in Fatimid Cairo and those especially stretched out along the al Mutiyah Street were built in different eras, some built along the Fatimid era while others and those that are more prevalent were built during the Mamluk and Ottoman eras. The end of the Hussein Mosque is the beginning of an area known as Bain al-Kasrain, which translates to the area between two palaces, a Fatimid name which came from the gardens that decorated the area between two palaces at the end of the Fatimid era. And with the start of the Ayyubid era, the area was converted to a built-up area until it developed into what we see before us. al Muayyah Street today begins at the northern end with a large Fatimid mosque, and that is the mosque of Al-Hakim Bemrillah. While it ends at the northern limits with another large mosque, which is actually Mamluk, and that is the Muayyad Mosque. However, the architectural style of each era have many distinctive characteristics, which make it distinguishing between any two buildings easy. The two most important Fatimid mosques in al Muayyah Street are the Hakim Mosque and to the south of it, the Akmar Mosque. The Hakim Mosque lies at the northernmost point of Fatimid Cairo, between the two gates of Al-Nasr and Al-Futu. Its construction was started by the Fatimid Caliph, Al-Aziz Billah, and was completed by his son in the year 403 Hijra, or 1013 CE, and so became known as the Hakim Mosque. Its area covers nearly 14,000 square meters, making it the second largest mosque in Cairo after the mosque of Ibn Talun. This mosque was, for a very long time during the Fatima era, and the ones that came after them, considered the grand or official mosque of the city. 
The mosque itself consists of a large outdoor courtyard surrounded by four vestibules, and in the middle of it is a passage that ends at a dome in front of the niche. The qibla wall has two domes adorning its corners, while its two minarets lie on the northwestern side of the structure. One of which is cylindrical, while the other is octagonal. Both minarets are decorated with floral and geometrical patterns, in addition to calligraphy. This is the beginning of Al Muizzadini La Al Fatimi Street near the gates of Al Nasser and Al Futuh, and there ahead of us is the Mosque of Al Hakam Bi Amir La. From where I stand, the mosque's minaret and its domes can be seen. This mosque was the second one built in Cairo after the Azhar Mosque. This mosque, however, was much better preserved and still stands in its original shape and form. We can still see the wide entrance and its courtyard, the same fountain, and water taps that have been there since its construction. The later Fatimid rules aimed to give an air of sanctity to the Hakam Mosque for reasons that they believed were of great importance. They gave it a great deal of religious importance and even favoured it over the Al Azhar Mosque at the time. Al Hakam bi Amrullah Mosque is named after the Caliph Al Hakam bi Amrullah the man of whom many fables were told in Egyptian folklore because he disappeared and his end is still unknown to this day while some say he was killed in one of the basements. When Al-Hakim was murdered, or rather, after he disappeared, never to return, many legends came about attempting to explain his disappearance. Most of these accounts made their way into Egyptian folklore, and to some extent, that is where the importance and allure of the Hakim Mosque comes from. To this day, the Bukhara are interested in the Hakim Mosque for specific reasons relating to their sects. Next to the Hakim Mosque lies the Nasr Gate, one of the main gates of Fatimid Cairo. The gate is made up of two square towers. The entrance leads to an intersecting crypt, while the other gate next to it is the Fatur Gate, which is made up of two semi-cylindrical towers. This gate leads to a square covered by a low dome. As for the Akmar Mosque, it was built in the northern part of Fatimid Cairo on Al Ma'ayya Street. It was built by the vizier Al Mamun Al Batahi in the year 509 Hijri or 1125 CE and is considered one of the hanging mosques as it was built on top of a shopping area. The hanging mosques were dubbed that because prayers were held on the first floor, a distinctly Fatimid invention. The mosque would be built atop a series of shops whose proceeds went to the mosque as endowments to cover all of its expenses. Al Akmar Mosque is traditional in its components but its decorative elements make it one of the most beautiful Fatimid mosques. It begins with a protruding entrance on its northwestern facade, decorated with geometrical engravings, the first of its kind in any Egyptian mosque. Inside, the mosque is defined by an open area in the middle flanked by four corridors, the largest of which is the Rawak of al Qibla. This mosque is a thing of beauty and importance, especially in terms of its architecture, decoration, and construction. 
It was built by the Fatimids in Cairo and was named al aqmur because its stone was similar in form to the moon, or al kamar The architect in charge of building it really did an amazing job, especially when it came to its layout and construction, as you can still see when you look at it in present day. So these were the mosque's architectural strong points. However, it is very famous nowadays for a different reason. And this reason has attracted scholars and orientalists from all over the world. It is the fine decorative scroll work that covers its facade and which far surpassed the calligraphy done on many mosques decades and centuries later. Fatimid architecture is an important era in Islamic architectural history thanks to its distinctive style and fashion. This style is still evident to this day despite the influences that came into play over the centuries that followed adding their own architectural touches. This fact makes it difficult to determine whether these mosques as they exist today are purely Fatimid by design or if they were a result of intermingling of styles over the course of a whole millennium.